Well hello there, welcome back to the channel, hope you're safe and well. In this video I'm going to be reviewing the new digital day and night scope from One Leaf, the NV500. So let's roll the titles. I was contacted very recently by the nice people at One Leaf to see if I'd be interested in reviewing their brand new product. And it turned up by career today. It's the One Leaf NV500 Commander Day Digital Day Night Scope. Um, and as you can see from the picture on the box, it's a smaller footprint than the, uh, uh, than the NV400, which is more like a traditional rifle scope shape. So up until about two weeks ago, I didn't even know this existed. This is brand new product off the press. So uh, I guess I'm very lucky to uh, be getting a preview copy to look at. So uh, let's open the box then and uh, have a look and see what we get, shall we? Well, if it's um, anything like the NV400, it will be quite a good package. So oh, let's have a look. Now we've got the, uh, the manual. Put that to one side and open up. Uh, warranty, two-year warranty certificate. Let's zoom that in. Right, okay, so here we are inside the box then. So we've got a, um, a Picatinny mount that obviously screws on to the bottom of the unit. Looking at that, that looks like that's zero MOA to me. And then we've got our um, infrared torch, uh, which has got a battery inside it, and it comes with... A charger so stick that back there we've got a nice soft bag for keeping it in that to one side let's take the unit out so here we've got the unit and you can see we've got the laser rangefinder on the side which is a lot more compact than the laser rangefinder on the NV400. And it looks like there's also the red dot laser on there as well. But one thing that you'll notice is that this unit has removable lenses. Now, this model comes with two uh, size lenses. This is the two times lens. And uh, I'll have to refer back to the manual to see how far it goes up from two to what, what, what the maximum magnification is. Um, they also do a 1.5 times lens. This is a 50 mm um, diameter objective lens. And the 1.5, that has a 30 mm objective lens. So um, obviously you're going to have a wider field of view. Um, because this is a brand new product, they don't have um, a 1.5 uh, lens off the production line to send me at the moment. So they've said they'll send me one as soon as they become available. That's how new this product is. So clearly that lens attaches on there. And then we've got a, what we've got here, sunshade, screwing sunshade and an eye cup. And then we've got our tools and screws for the Picatinny mount. Set of O-rings, now the waterproof O-rings and um, a USB charging lead. So that's what you get in the box then. Let's have a quick go at assembling this then. So to put the lens on, you take the lens cap off, there's a little arrow on the side there, and you line up the pointy finger of that arrow, push, push in, and to twist till it clicks. Now, these lenses are electronic lenses so that as soon as you put the lens on, the actual base unit knows what lens it's, it is that you've got on there, whether it's the two times or it's the, um, the one and a half times. Now, um, you'll notice that with the two times, we've got the cap on the front that folds flat back uh, for nighttime use and daylight use. Close that, and then we've got the um, 
the sunshade that screws on the front, just like the NV400. Uh, with the smaller lens, the 1.5, that has got an adjustable iris. So you don't need to use that cap. You can adjust the iris to adjust how much light uh, comes into the unit and also controls, uh, you know, control the depth of field. So um, underneath then we've got six screw holes and we've got four screws to go in so you can uh, position this wherever you need to, the best position for uh, how you're going to mount it on your rifle. So um, what are we going to do? Uh, I'll just put a couple of screws in for now. Um, I'm going to be putting this on going to be putting this on my ghost I guess because uh, it's Picatinny mounts so we'll just stick that on there for now uh, put these other screws in looks like you get a spare screw they give you five screws as well so I'm just going to put four in because I'm going to actually weigh it to see what it weighs with the mount and everything um, built-in battery so there's no additional batteries like with the NV400. So I've got my scales here. Let's have a look and see what it weighs. So we zeroed up. And that is 994 grams. Now you're probably saying to yourself, wow, that's quite heavy. But one of the things that you need to know with this is this is not plastic. This bodywork here uh, you can see the screws at the front end where it's screwed together. This is a whole, this is all solid metal. So, I mean, this isn't your cheap plastic bodywork. This is just not going anywhere. This is a solid bit of kit. So I guess the next thing then is to um, get it on the rifle and, uh, and have a look at the, uh, the features and um, how it works. So here we're looking at the right hand side of the scope with the little cap removed and you can see there you can gain access to the micro SD card that comes with the unit. There's also the USB-C uh, socket for um, recharging the battery, the internal battery and also for connecting the unit up to the computer to download your files if you don't want to remove the SD card. And uh, to the right of that is um, a little mini HDMI uh, socket if you want to uh, connect it up to um, a monitor screen to, uh, to show what uh, is being shown on the viewfinder. And also there's the little reset button there as well. Looking at the external controls, to the left you've got the rotary controller. A quick press uh, activates the laser rangefinder. A longer press takes you into the menus and then rotating that will uh, take you through the menu items. And when you're outside of the menu then rotating that controller um, affects the, uh, the zoom level of the scope. You'll notice that you've got uh, two little holes with a little microphone symbol by them. They're the mic that's the microphone for the video recorder. You can switch that on and off in the menus. You've got three buttons then. On the left uh, a quick press uh, takes you through between uh, daylight mode, starlight mode and night mode. A longer press activates picture on picture or picture in picture I should say. Uh, the centre button has a raised edge so that you can identify that by touch. A uh, quick press of that starts the video, a longer press will take a photograph. And then to the right uh, you've got the uh, brightness level. Uh, a quick press of that will take you up through brightness levels 10% at a time. Once you get to 100% it goes back down to 10% uh, again. Um, and a longer press will take you into your uh, files so that you can view your videos and, um, and photos. The button on the side with the green surround on the left, that's the power button. Uh, you press and hold that to power the unit up. Once it's powered up, a quick press will put it in standby mode. This is what you see through the eyepiece of the NV500 then. 
uh, same setup really as the NV400 if you saw that video. Uh, different to what the um, uh, what the digital scope actually records through the front. You won't see all this additional information. But just to go through it then, um, you can see uh, starting from the left, the top left hand corner we've got a compass. Then running down you see you've got times one. Uh, I've got the rifle behind me on the floor looking at a target through another room. Let me just turn the... Um, the multiplication knob and you'll see that the the magnification will go up times three and that's the multiplier for the size of the lens so with a two times lens at time four times four that's eight times magnification uh, and as you see it will go right up to 13 times get it go all the way up 12 times 13 times which is 26 times magnification so let's run that all the way down again right so we're back to zero uh, then down the next one is uh, where you see the figure two and the little arrow on the green scale that's the inclination uh, that's the angle uh, showing you the angle the rifle is pointed either up or down and then bottom left hand corner where it says 4K 30 frames per second, that's the definition of the video. Um, it will go up to 4K 120 frames per second, uh, but that's only for daylight use. If you're, if you're videoing at night, then you need to limit yourself to 4K 30 frames per second. Uh, going across that grey bar on the bottom then, you'll see there that it's identified that we've got the, the two times 50 millimetre lens fitted. And then you've got the sunshine symbol that will so show either daylight mode, starlight mode or night mode. And then the next one, that is your um, uh, ballistic calculator setting. If memory serves me correct, there's seven memories for that. The next one that says 50, that's the brightness level. And then you've got how much memory is remaining in the SD card. And then finally, uh, how much battery power you've got left. And you can see... I'm on half battery, uh, only down to half battery with all the uh, what with all the time that I've had it on. So it's actually you know actually lasts quite well the battery. And then up on the right hand side, then uh, the zero with the green uh, the green scale and the little red arrow, uh, that is the um, oh, <laughs> I've forgotten the word the Kent. That's it. That's the Kent, so that is uh, whether you've twisted your rifle to, to the, either to the left or right. You see we're on zero here, so the rifle is perfectly upright. Um, so that's what you see through the eyepiece then. As I said, you don't see that through, uh, num you know, most of that's not, re that's not recorded uh, when you set the video to record. Uh, when you do record, if I just switch the record on for a moment, You'll see, look, the uh, the recording indicators flashing, and the timer starts counting up to show you how much your record, uh, your length of your recording on your video, and then one click on the top to click it off again. Well, just quickly, something I missed is the laser rangefinder. If you uh, just press the click the uh, rotary controller on the top, one click, there uh, you'll see a little green box with a dot. That is where the um, laser rangefinder beam is and uh, you can see that that's lasing eight and a half yards up at the top you can see like a little golf flag if that's red that means that the laser rangefinder is getting a strong return signal if it can't get a return signal that that's grayed out to show you that it's not working but you can see you can use that laser rangefinder up to a quite close range so it's quite good for ratting Let's just uh, quickly go through the menus then. You access the menu by uh, pushing the uh, rotary controller down and holding it down. And you'll see that the, uh, the menu settings come up. Uh, seven reticle sites, click to, collect, uh, to select those and then you can run through and select which one you want. So if I want reticle one, I'll go up, select that and it will be set to there. Uh, one shot zero won't show you how to do that again. This is exactly the same as the NV400. If you if you want if you're interested how that works, I mean the manual is very good and very clear. It's pretty uh, intuitive and easy to use. Reticle colours then 
white, red, green, blue, black. And then we've got um, the different positions for our shot zero. So you see we've got six memories here. And this is the settings. It will record the, the reticle, the reticle colour, <clears throat> and the X and Y position for your zero point uh, for six different uh, setups. You've got the ballistic parameters, which is currently off. If I switch those on, you'll see you've got all the, all the elements to add into the ballistics, which I haven't done yet for this. Go back to the main menu. You can set the uh, set the reticle up to first focal plane or second focal plane. To be honest, on this second focal plane, uh, really isn't much use. So I'd recommend you just leave it on the first focal plane. The range marker align. That's the little green box with a dot in. You set that up, and you can move that so that it lines up with the uh, um, with the laser rangefinder beam. Uh, then we've got the um, sensitivity, uh, ISO sensitivity, this camera control. Units, we can set yards or meters. You can set your screen aspect, 16.9 letterbox, 4.3 standard or small. We'll run down, <coughs> movie mode, that sets your, uh, your different, um, different modes for the video recording. And then you've got a similar one. Oop went the wrong way got a similar one for photo resolution you can set your movie clip time uh, so that it'll automatically switch off after that period uh, you've got an auto record so that's for um, center fire rifles I think what happens is the uh, the recoil uh, causes the record to come on you can turn the sound recorder off and on you've got the uh, uh, microphone on the top of the unit you can switch that off then you've got exposure and metering controls for the cameras. Brightness level, you can set that in here as the, this is the default level and then you can adjust that using one of the buttons on the top. Contrast, saturation, magnification adjust. Uh, this is to go up between the different levels. You can go up by 0.1 or 1.0 or 0.2. But to be honest, if you go by 0.2, it'll take you forever to get to the top. Uh, you can turn the red dot on and off that's on the laser range finder. Uh, you can have the default setting so that the buttons uh, are on. If you've got this default set to off, you can always switch them on by pressing the left and the centre button together and that will turn them on. We've got the LCD brightness. You can, you can have a default with, here I've got the default with the picture in picture off. You can have that come on automatically, but you can also switch that on with the buttons outside. Set your default mode for when you switch it on for what, uh, whether you want day, starry, night on. The display icons, that's the grey bar uh, along the bottom that I showed you that tells you all the bits and pieces. If it's on, it stays on. If you set that to off, it will come on uh, to begin with when you first switch the unit on and then it will disappear. If you want it to reappear, you can just click the um, uh, one of the controls and it will reappear. Uh, the display widgets, that's the compass, the uh, elevation and the cant. I'm actually going to switch those off actually because I don't use those. So, so now I've shown you what they look like. Then you've got the calibration for the gyro and the compass. That's for setting the widgets. And then the final screen, you can decide what you want showing on your video. I've got those all off. Set your date format, set the clock, format the SD card, find out what version of the firmware you are, and uh, you can reset to the factory settings. And then if I go down, you're back on the first page again. So that's the menus then. Well, here we are then, trying the uh, MV500 out on the range. As you can see, I've mounted it to my BRK Ghost. And uh, I think you agree, it actually looks the part. It, uh, it fits quite nicely on there. I don't know, uh, don't notice a significant increase in weight replacing this with uh, a scope. Um, I've been checking out the laser rangefinder, comparing it to my um, uh, Hawk LRF, and, um, and it, it seems quite on the money, seems quite accurate. Um, this one's got 
uh, the NV500 in comparison to the NV400 has got a horizontal beam. Um, I'll show you that when we do the night time footage to sh uh, so you see the beam. The 400 had the vertical, this has got the horizontal. I know some people prefer a horizontal, they think it gives you a more accurate laser result. Um, so we'll look at that in a separate sequence. So um, I've uh, I've set the ballistic calculator up with all of the um, the bits and pieces, all the data that needs to go in it. I won't show that setting up here. Um, I have done a previous video. The ballistic calculator settings and setting it ex up is exactly the same as the NV400, and I've already done a video on that, so I'll put a link to that video, um, and also you'll see it up on the screen. Can't remember which number video it is, but it will be on the screen anyway. So um, I've zeroed in fine-tuned uh, as, as best I can and um, now I've, I've put a magazine full of uh, pellets we're using uh, Air Arms Diablo Fields which came out best in the Ghost in a recent pellet test at the indoor range you may have seen that uh, video and uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to test uh, the accuracy of the ballistic calculator and, and its predicted um, point of impact see how it goes so I've put some targets out and uh, and what I'll do is um, show you the zoom and everything on the uh, on the scope as well, so you can see the the, the definition and the resolution. Obviously, uh, what's recorded is different to what I see through the eyepiece. The resolution for the eyepiece is not as good as the resolution from the video. So when I'm looking at through the eyepiece at maximum magnification, there is a little bit of um, uh, oh, what's the word? Think of it. pixelation that's it there is a bit of pixelation but um, you won't notice that on the on the video because the video is recording at, uh, at 4k okay let's get cracking then I'm gonna switch this oh, already had it running switch it off and start a new video right so I've just switched the video on on the uh, internal camera to record through the lens uh, you can see we'll try and get the focus sorted as best we can looks about there and then what we're going to do is zoom in so we're up to six times on here so that's 12 times magnification it's two times lens so whatever it shows you through the viewfinder you times that by two so that's 16 times let's move down to the rat that's 24 times and that's 26 times well, we're on the rat then let's take a shot of the rat oh, I've got to come back down to get my zero they suggest you're always better being in a, a low um, in one times or below so you can get the box exactly where you need to right so that's zoomed that so I'm going to zoom back in up to maximum magnification and see how we get on there we go <laughs> first shot got that one right let's come back down it's come back down to laser range this one that's giving me a range so I can zoom back in I need to go to there I can see that well enough oh, might help if I load okay load again Come back down, I'm gonna raise this one. I'm having a bit of difficulty lazing today and getting a oh there we go. Get the 
focusing. Right, I'm going to be using the, the recommended aim point, which is like a little circle, green circle with like um, diagonal cross marks on it. There we go. Zoom that back in. And there we go at these targets down the back there. So there you are, then, daylight recording through uh, the NV500. OK, let's check out um, how this scope looks then. Looking down the garden range, I'm at the doorway to the conservatory, so I'm 40 yards from the backstop and where that rat target is. And it's exactly half an hour after the scheduled uh, sunset so it's pretty dark outside from the naked eye I can just barely see the shape of that rat down the bottom there so let's zoom in so what I'll do I'll open the lens cap up give it a bit more light so you can see I'm not using any infrared This is just daylight mode, not using any infrared at all. So let's switch to night mode, or well, we go to starlight mode first off. So it's telling me to open the lens cap. So you can see the starlight mode. We're not using any any external light. So if I can focus that in a little bit more. Not really. Switch to night mode. Let's take the take the zoom all the way back. Oh, I think we've got a bat flying about in the garden there. Let me see the bat. There we go. Can you see the bat? <laughs> That's great. The other bat. Can you see that bat flying about? Awesome. This is just using the, the available light on the sensor. Yeah, the bat's still flying around there. Let's switch to night mode. still catch the bat flying about <laughs> right I'm just going to uh, laser range find the uh, the bee shed you can see horizontal beam that's saying 38 yards which is correct right apologies for the wind on the on the mic I've got to just use the camera handheld um, I'm out on my rabbit permission it's uh, it's about half past seven now 
um, I think the uh, I think sunsets out at quarter past eight. I don't know, it might be earlier than that. Anyway, uh, I'm out to give the um, NV500 a go in a uh, real world test on rabbits and uh, when it gets dark and uh, I'll be recording some footage. So let's get at it, shall we? Well, here we are then, let's wrap this one up, shall we? Now, I guess to begin with in this review, I've got to find some uh, some cons, haven't I? Which is um, a little bit difficult from my perspective because I really like this unit, genuinely. Uh, so let's go through the bits and pieces that some people might have an issue with. First off, when we weighed it right at the beginning, uh, it was weighing in at just under one kilograms. But bearing in mind, uh, this is with the largest uh, lens, the two times lens. I suspect, I don't know, I suspect that with the smaller lens, it'll weigh a little bit less. You've also got the LRF included in that weight. Um, and you've got your rechargeable batteries, which are not lightweight, that are uh, inside the unit as well. And not forgetting, it's not plastic, it's all solid metal construction. So at the end of the day, you're not really adding much to the weight of a normal scope. And um, most of these um, day night digital scopes are fairly weighty anyway. So, I mean, I don't know in weight how this compares to the competition, uh, but certainly switching this over from, uh, uh, from a scope, uh, I didn't notice a significant difference in the weight. I mean, this is quite a heavy rifle anyway. I guess on a lighter rifle, I might notice it, but it was, it's not really an issue for me. Um, one thing that I do think is a bit, little bit quirky, you've got to be careful with this side cap here. Now, usually these things come with sort of like rubber, uh, rubber plugging caps that are, have got a little band that holds them on. So when you pull the cap out, it stays there. This, the actual, you know, it's a metal cap that screws in so um and there's no there's nothing to keep this and a couple of times i thought oh where did i put that so i think that you've got to be careful that you know what you're doing with this and where and if you do take it off put it down where you can find it i i suspect that this can easily be lost um so yeah so that's you know we're, we're talking about silly minor points here really um okay so last night on the rabbits uh, at the last little knockings, uh, it got that dark that I had to use the IR torch. Now they put a weaver rail on top of the LRF and all the diagrams show putting the torch here. But as you can probably imagine, if you put, put the torch there, if you're right handed, you're going to bring your left hand up to try and adjust the focus and the torch gets in the way. So... Um, I suspect in future I'll have to sort of mount the torch on a mount at the front well away from here so that you can focus it. Um, but, you know, I mean, that's that's a surmountable thing. That's not a, a really an issue with the unit. Um, so what else? Oh, yeah, just need to mention as well. I mean, um, I was I was lying in the grass, low down in the grass, and it was quite long. 
uh, using my bipod and I did find that when you're low down um, it is a bit difficult getting a, a, a proper reading or an immediate reading from the laser rangefinder. I guess in that position that's going to be the, st the same for for um, any laser rangefinders. I mean in the past I've used a traditional scope and I've used my little hawk reader uh, and I've I've had to sort of like sit up a little bit to get the reading so you're higher above uh, above the ground. Certainly uh, when I was shooting on the sticks it, it wasn't a problem. Um, <clears throat> on the same thing with the laser rangefinder as well during daylight shooting it does seem to have more of a problem coming up with a reading during daylight night time no problem but during daytime uh, the only time that the laser beam is in alignment with the little green box is when you when you're at one times uh, magnification so um, because obviously during daylight you can't see the beam and once you go out at one time the beam moves away from that box the box doesn't move with the beam so it's a bit of a, um, a a pain having to go back down to one times to get your range and then zoom in to to get the magnification you want uh, in the dark obviously it's not an issue because you can see the beam so it doesn't matter what magnification you're in as long as the beam's visible in your viewfinder uh, you can line that up so that's um uh, that's the only that's the only sort of cons that I can really find uh, with this really. So uh, let's go on to the pros then. In this one, you know, compared to the uh, NV400, you had the internal batteries and then you had the additional battery on top. This has just got the internal batteries. But I was out last night for, I had this on for about three hours continuously. I was, you know, pressing the, uh, the side button to put it into standby mode. Uh, but at the end of the evening, I just checked um, and on the little battery icon in the eyepiece, it had come down the first segment, which means that I only used 20% of the battery. So 20% 20, 20 of the battery and I was out for three hours. That suggests that, you know, you're going to have enough battery life in there. Uh, if you don't, then you can unscrew this and you can run it off of a, um, a little battery pack. Uh, you know, buy one of those phone charger battery pack things and just plug that in through the USB socket uh, socket on the side there uh, and you can power it from that as well. Um, so certainly battery life's not going to be an issue, that's good. Um, I need to mention the manual, you know, compared to some of the things that I've looked at recently, this manual is, <laughs> is very good. Uh, it's very clear in explaining everything. And to be honest, this unit, one of its advantages is it's super easy super intuitive to use you know you've got one controller rotary controller that clicks to get in the men up and down in the menus you've only got three buttons on the top here and um, it's not difficult to remember what those buttons do the one at the front the middle one's got a raised edge so you always know you're on the center one and not the side buttons and to be honest you're probably only going to be using the center one uh, when you're out anyway the other two are you know for setting up um, for lot like long-term setup not sort of intermittent settings that you're going to want to change uh, while you're out probably um, so so you know as I say very 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 easy to use the menus you can go through the menus and work the menus out really uh, without the manual the only menu items I have difficulty with are the uh, are the camera ones uh, but if you if you're into cameras and, and videography and stuff, then you're going to understand those. But um, to be honest, I haven't changed any of those settings uh, and you've seen the results that I got through the camera. They're not bad. They're passable. So, you know, so you don't need to be a camera whiz to understand the uh, the ISO and the the, um, the brightness and um, all the other camera settings that you've got in there. Uh, what else have we got? Oh, I've said minimal controls said this thing is solid built like a rock no you know <laughs> it feels solid no plastic you know uh, okay you can get say something that might be a bit smaller might be a bit lighter but then you're going to have plastic you know is that going to stand the test of time is that going to uh, you know be able to stand the rough and tumbles of being out uh, when you're hunting and stuff like that um, and then last but not least the changeable lenses um, I mean 
other manufacturers have had to bring out different versions for for you know different levels of magnification with this one unit instead of buying two you buy one you can buy this option that comes with the two lenses so you've got the two times lens for when you want to do the, the longer distances and if you're doing the close-in work you've got the uh, the 1.5 times lens uh, with the with the adjustable iris and you know you don't have to worry about changing lenses it recognizes as I've shown you through the eyepiece uh, as soon as you plug it in it will tell it can tell uh, what lens it's got on it and it will make the appropriate adjustments so there we have it then the new um, one leaf commander NV 500 Eagle and um, yeah I really like it I think it's really easy to use as you see it took it straight out on the rabbits um, any new bit of kit make, takes you a bit of time to get used to. So, yeah, I mean, over over another couple of uh, uh, trips out, I'll be on the ball with this a bit more um, and it becomes less of an issue because I won't have to think about it. Um, but for now, yeah, highly recommend this. If you're interested in something like this or you've been looking to buy, then I highly recommend that you take a look at this model. Uh, go to the One Leaf site and check out all their blurb on it there and um, I don't think you'll be disappointed so then that's it for this uh, video hope you found uh, you know something in there of interest and um, that's all I've got to say on this one hopefully see you on the next video but for now from me it's bye for now